Hi there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled, Don't Concatenate Strings. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm happy to be your instructor. What we're doing here is working through all of the gotchas contained in the DevOps Collectives book, the big book of PowerShell gotchas. This is a free, open-source book that you can find at the below URL, or by doing a Google search for that matter. <laughs> and in today's session, we'll be looking at item 14, Don't Concatenate Strings. Before we get into the code, I think it's apropos to define what concatenation actually is. What we do in PowerShell and other scripting programming languages is oftentimes work with character sequences called strings. And the process of concatenation is simply that of appending one string to the end of another. And in the Windows PowerShell language, we use the common plus sign or addition operator to do that concatenation. Let's turn to the code now. Our script for today is entitled concat.ps1. And as usual, I have a header section with metadata, including my contact information and a short URL to the big book of PowerShell gotchas. Now let's take a look. We have our first section here on setting up the environment. You'll note that I'm running Windows PowerShell 5 release to manufacturing, but really anything in this video will apply to any PowerShell version. The nature of this gotcha is as follows. The suggestion is to avoid concatenating strings. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, some programmers and PowerShell scripters may be just fine and comfortable with it, but as we'll go along, I think you'll see some potential problems, and I'm also going to give you an alternative. Take a look at lines 24 through 38 in my script file. I'm creating a simple function here called getBiosInfo. And let me select the lines by highlighting them in the gutter and then pressing F8 or clicking Run Selection to run the code. What does it actually do? Let me adjust the split bar and we can see that if we call the function now in the console, get tab BIOS tab, I'll use tab completion, that's another one of our gotchas come to think of it. It comes back with a two line out put formatted to be a little bit easier to read, at least with my colorblind eyes, giving the name of the computer, localhost, and the BIOS manufacturer. So if we look here that the function takes a single parameter, it's a string array called computer name, and the default value, if you don't pass one into the function, will be the localhost. And then the guts of the function is a loop here, which would support, again, if you passed in an array of computer names. And for each one, we're doing a get sim instance and grabbing the contents of the class Win32BIOS against each computer through the loop. And then here's where the money is. We create a variable called message that takes some metadata, computer, this is a string literal that we want to appear in our output, and then we can use the plus sign to concatenate other elements together. Specifically, we're going to grab the contents of the computer variable. We're gonna concatenate this little doohickey here. And what you're seeing here is the escape character, the back tick. The back tick is located above the tab, key on your keyboard. It's not to be confused with the single quote. Backtick N inserts a new line because, of course, you see in the output it's on two lines instead of one, which would be the default. We throw in another plus to concatenate another string literal, BIOS manufacturer. And then the final thing we add in and concatenate is the value of the manufacturer property of the WMI variable. And the WMI variable is the results of our get sim instance call. Okay, now why is this considered so problematic? There's really two potential problems with using traditional string concatenation in PowerShell. One is that it reduces the legibility of the code. And two, it's easy to mess up spacing and formatting. You'll note that it says computer colon space localhost. That's because I accounted for the space in my string literal. Remember that the space is a legitimate character in a string, and PowerShell is not going to insert spaces unless you explicitly call them. You'll notice that I did the same thing here with my call after BIOS manufacturer. Just to finish my explanation, in line 35, we clear the host, so every time we run the function, it gives us a clean console, and then we use write host. I'm using write host here because it gives us some ability to format both the background color and the foreground color. So there's the problem in a nutshell. The workaround, or the alternate possibility, is to use what's called string interpolation. And actually, come to think of it, hindsight always being 2020, I probably should have defined string interpolation on a previous slide. 
At any rate, string interpolations, also called variable interpolation or variable substitution or variable expansion, and according to Wikipedia, this is the process of evaluating a string literal containing one or more placeholders, yielding a result in which the placeholders are replaced with their corresponding values. And that reminds me, I forgot to finish what I was trying to teach you up here with the escape character. This code will not work if I use single quotes here. Double quotes are your magic secret sauce for performing string interpolation. The one thing that double quotes will do that's really cool is expand any variable calls within the double quotes. We'll see that in just a minute. And the other thing is that it's able, the double quotes allow the PowerShell engine to parse or comprehend stuff like the escape character. So that's why we needed double quotes in order to force the PowerShell engine to interpret this not as literally backtick n, but as instead the new line escape character. All right, so let's look at our refactoring factoring of that function. Here I'm creating a new function definition called getBiosInfo2, and it actually does the same stuff. Let me select the lines and load the function into our run space, and then let me CLS to force clear the screen and do a get BIOS, I'll do double tab in order to go past the original get BIOS function. And you'll notice here, let's see, it gives us computer localhost space BIOS manufacturer and then the name of the manufacturer. Well, it's not giving us a new line, but it looks basically the same as our previous function. Let's take a closer look at the code and see what's going on. There's no difference in the parameter block. We're still using a for each construction. Then what's the difference? Even our WMI variable definition is still the same as it was before. Well, it looks like what's happening here is on line 57, we're using double quotes around the entire output, you see? And remember the secret sauce there that we can call variables just by including them in that complex string. And so we would expect computer colon would fill in with whatever the host name is, as you see in the output. BIOS manufacturer, we do a call to WMI.manufacturer, and that comes back with the appropriate data. You'll note here that I have a comment, an inline comment on line 57 that says that this is actually a sub-expression. Try doing it without the quotation marks first and see what happens. Well, let's do that right now. Let me get rid of the quotes and get rid of that outside dollar sign token. And let's see what happens here. I'm going to scroll out by holding the control key on my keyboard and rolling out with my mouse just to make sure I can see everything. We'll select the lines, load the function back into our run space again, and do a get BIOS info 2. And this time I'm going to use the parameter just to add some spice here. Whoa, that did not give us good results. It gave us a bunch of gobbledygook. What is going on here? Why is PowerShell getting confused? Well, let me zoom in again and take a look logically at what's happening. As soon as the PowerShell parser hits this piece here, it knows that it should resolve that variable because that's what the dollar sign sigil does. It's a variable resolver. In fact, we discussed that in a related PowerShell.org tech session. So it's able to at least tap into that variable. And remember, the variable WMI, let me force it into the run space here, contains a lot more than just the manufacturer property. You'll notice that it has one, two, three, four, five properties by default. So PowerShell got confused because it didn't recognize the dot and the rest of this string. So what you have to remember is that if you're going to do the string interpolation method and you want to access properties of objects, you're actually going to need to create a sub-expression, which simply means placing the property call in parentheses and then affixing a dollar sign sigil in front of that construction. So when PowerShell hits this, it's going to say, oh, okay, dollar sign sigil, and I'm inside a double quoted string. So whatever follows, I'm going to have to resolve. And because we've placed whatever follows in parentheses, we know from order of operations that parenthetical expressions are always evaluated first. Well, there you go. Thank you very much for taking the time and expending the effort to look at this presentation. The script is available at my website. It's timwarnertech.com forward slash concat, C-O-N-C-A-T dot zip. All of these videos in this series are at the PowerShell.org YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell.org. The community site for PowerShell.org is, reasonably enough, PowerShell.org. 
And finally, if you want to reach out to me for any reason, please feel free to do so. My email address is timothy-warner at pluralsight.com. I'm at Twitter. My handle is techtrainertim. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Take good care.